Chapter 13, Monday, July 17, 1440 hours. It was fairly easy to raise the foresail and get the Phoenix moving again, but as to whether or not it was in the right direction, that was anybody's guess. Radford had given their last position as east northeast of Guam. Even though they had drifted a lot since that reading, they were following the compass west southwest. It seemed the only course. I don't know, Luke said uneasily. We're probably wasting our time. We could be getting even more lost than before. In a crisis, lectured Ian, it's always best to keep busy to prevent the onset of panic. Luke stared at the boy, who spoke so seldom that they often had to remind themselves he was aboard. Since when did you become ship's counselor? Ian flushed. I saw it on a documentary once. Luke sighed. Ian, did anyone ever tell you that you watch too much TV? My parents, Ian nodded sadly, right before they put me on this trip. Luke sent Ian down below to the navigation room to see if he could find any maps, charts, the captain had always called them. In the open ocean there were no landmarks, but it might be helpful to know the course the Phoenix had been following before disaster struck. He watched the younger boy's careful footsteps. The schooner's deck now sloped dangerously down toward the bow. This was because both pumps were working in the engine room near the stern. For the time being, anyway, they were letting the forward compartments fill up with water. It was a big risk, no question about it. If the Phoenix got too far out of balance, Luke reflected, it could take a diagonal dive, just like the Titanic. But tough times called for tough choices. They needed the engine, and Lissa couldn't fix it if the thing was under water. Luke looked up, squinting in the sunlight. He could barely make out Carla perched atop the foremast. She was scanning the horizon for signs of other ships, ready to fire off distress flares if she spotted anything. The job had fallen to her mostly because she was the only one with the guts to climb up the rat lines, her and J.J., but Luke doubted J.J., the daredevil, would be interested unless there was a reasonable chance of killing himself. And besides, the actor's son was boycotting the effort to be rescued, still convinced that their current peril was all part of CNC's plan. Lissa had already started taking apart the motor, even though the engine room was still under two feet of water. She was working by snorkel mask. Every few minutes she would surface like a submarine, and another wet part would hit the drying towel with a dull clink. Will's official job was pumper, but he doubled as a nervous nag. You remember where that piece goes, right? He could blitz down the open engine hatch. You'll know how to put it back together. No, she said sarcastically. I'm busting it up just to get you killed. Will couldn't decide what made him more uneasy, their current danger or the fact that Lissa was emerging as the big hero. Ian came running up the companionway, waving a thick folder with the CNC logo on the cover. You found the maps? Luke asked. Ian shook his head. Files. Files? Luke repeated. On us. Luke gave Ian the wheel and fished through his own folder. Now that he thought about it, of course charting a new course would need information on its charges. Still, it was eerie to see his whole life between the covers. Almost like the FBI had been keeping tabs on him. But this stuff must have come from his parents. There were school pictures and report cards, medical records. It said he'd been allergic to milk as a baby. Was that true? No one had ever mentioned anything to him. All the court documents were in there, along with the arrest report and his suspension papers from school. And what was this? Luke recognized his mother's handwriting on the letter. Luke is a good boy, but lately he's been running a, with a tough crowd, including a boy named Reese, who has had trouble with the law before. We want to believe him when he says that the gun wasn't his, but we don't want to be naive either. Not where Luke's future is concerned. We can't take the chance that this Reese has gotten him involved with a gang. We think it might be a good idea to get him away from here for a while. Therefore, we're accepting the court's proposal to send him to you. Luke put the letter down, blinking hard. They said they believed me. By this time, all pumping work had stopped for the crew members to dig into their files. Lissa emerged from the engine room, and Carla abandoned her lookout post to join them. Even J.J. interrupted his tanning to flip quickly through his folder. 
He was unimpressed. Big deal. So I'm a flake. What else is new? He peered over Ian's shoulder. Couch potato, no friends. What a surprise. Lay off, Luke warned. But J.J. had already moved on to Will and Lissa. Whoa. What are you guys, hitmen? There isn't this much violence in the James Bond movies. Will flushed. I don't know how it happens. One minute we're just arguing. Lissa cut him off. Shut up, Will. We don't have to explain anything. Mind your own business, rich boy. J.J. shrugged. I don't see any of you guys in the poorhouse. CNC doesn't come cheap, you know. You find the money, Luke put in grimly, when your two choices are either here or jail. Or you borrow it, Carla added bitterly. Not all of us live in Beverly Hills. Yeah, what's your story? asked J.J., snatching the folder from her hands. She reacted like a wildcat. Give that back! J.J. held the fire file up out of her reach and kept on reading over his head. Carla leaped like a basketball player, grabbed the papers from his hand, and fixed him with a withering glare. Moron, she muttered. He looked bewildered. What'd I do? That's private, she raged. You know what it says? That you're world class at like 15 sports. What a deep, dark secret. My own father sends me halfway around the world just so he won't have to look at me. But you don't want anyone to find out you're a star? You didn't get to the part where it says that what a head case I am, she mumbled. We're all head cases, J.J. told her. This is a trip for head cases. That's why we're here. Lissa pushed her snorkel mask back down over her face. Well, this was fun. She stepped into the engine hatch. J.J. regarded the pile of folders. What are we going to do with these? Luke glared at him. You really want to hear my suggestion? J.J. picked up the files and walked to the gunwale. With the exaggerated wind-up of a major league pitcher, he flung them into the sea. How's the environment now? he asked Carla. It'll live, she replied tight-lipped. Well, let's get back to work, said J.J. Luke raised an eyebrow. Look who's admitting that we might be in trouble. I'm bored, that's all, J.J. insisted. Gotta have something to do till the cavalry arrives. Which pump is mine?